It has already been nearly an entire decade since Early Access for The Forest was released. I remember seeing this game on Steam and just losing my mind. Ten years later, here we are, looking it right in the eyes, the highly anticipated sequel, Sons of the Forest. To say that The Forest is an incredible game is an absolute understatement. I I'll just let the review speak for itself. For those of you that are new to the series, Sons of the Forest is a sequel to The Forest. It's a first-person survival horror game developed by In Night Games, where the player is stranded on a forested island inhabited by nightmarish cannibals and mutants alike. I'm literally purchasing this game as we speak, and I would like to go over the top 10 things I love about Sons of the Forest. Coming in at number one, one of the first things you'll notice in the game is the stunning quality of the graphics. The game looks incredible. The sunlight beaming through the trees, the tessellation of the snow as you walk through it, and don't even get me started on the woodcutting. The game overall is absolutely gorgeous and was executed very well in my opinion. The inventory system is fairly similar to the original game, although now with much more storage in comparison. The inventory system has some very useful LEDs that will help you navigate through your items in the darkness. Not only can you activate the lights, but you can also change the color of them. It's a little tricky to find some of the items that you pick up at first, but once you learn where everything gets sorted, you'll be golden. In the current state of the game, there are no hotkeys to bind your weapons. Holding the inventory button on your keyboard will, however, allow you to quick access your backpack to quickly swap between different weapons and items. Inside your inventory, you can select the backpack to add and remove objects to it as you please. Not having hotkeys was frustrating at first, but everything is accessible with my inventory keybind, so I'm pretty happy with it. The inventory system is very unique compared to other games, and I have to give it some love. Having companions to assist you throughout your adventure is a new addition to the forest. The companions are very convenient as they can help with gathering resources, building structures, assisting you in combat, signaling you when enemies are approaching, and so on. Kelvin is the very first companion you'll meet during your journey, and you'll be glad to have him by your side. That is until he chops down a tree and it lands on your log cabin that you spent an hour trying to build. I conducted a short experiment to see how many logs I could collect in 5 minutes compared to my charming AI friend Kelvin. In five minutes, I was able to collect 42 logs. Kelvin, on the other hand, was able to collect a whopping 66 logs, which comes to a difference of 24 more logs than I collected. Good job, Kelvin. The building mechanics have completely blown me away. Building and crafting now feel like an actual physical activity. For example, in order to build a lamp, you'll have to take a stick, jam it into the ground, and place the skull on top. Additionally, logs can be cut into quarter-sized pieces and even split down the middle. Logs can be attached and stacked to one another in a variety of ways. You can cut out sections of the logs that you've already placed, which is perfect for creating windows. People have already been creating some really impressive bases, so let's take a look at a couple of them. This base was built by Lord Pussy Destroyer. Let's see what people are saying about it. We can see the dedication to their craft when observing the size of the compound and the architecture of the building. This base was submitted by Peen Mister. What are, what are with these names? This is by far the best base I have ever seen in Sons of the Forest and embodies every other building ever made in human history. These are some pretty awesome builds, so good job guys. You can say goodbye to maps because we have a fully functional GPS with tracking devices. The GPS located inside of the emergency pack will effortlessly guide you through the cannibal inhabited island and displays a variety of icons that will lead you to several areas of interest. The purple icons mark locations for useful weapons and tools. The green icons are locations that connect you to the progression of the story. The white cave icons indicate cave entrances. Additional icons can be created when using GPS locators. These can be utilized to mark other locations that may be important to you. GPS locators can be used by jamming a stick in the ground and attaching your locator on the top. They can also be given to your companion so that you'll never lose sight of them. I absolutely love the concept of this and I'm sure it's something we can all appreciate. Dubby is a clean energy drink made to give you focus with no crash or jitters like the other energy drinks. No sugar, no artificial dyes, no maltodextrin fillers, no hidden ingredients. Mm -hmm. Go to w.gg and use code CAVITY for your discount. Sons of the Forest introduces brand new cannibal and mutant variants that we've never seen before, all consisting of their own unique characteristics and behaviors. Some of the cannibals will cry when you kill one of their homies. 
Some cannibals are more confident when their leader is nearby. Likewise, some cannibals are more apprehensive when their leader is killed. Some cannibals will even try to steal your resources. I've caught them several times attempting to steal logs from my base. I never know what I'm going to stumble upon, and even with 15 hours into the game, I'm still encountering new mutants that I've yet to come across, keeping me on the edge of my seat. The seasons play a critical role in Sons of the Forest. Most of the seasons are harmless, however, winter is without a doubt the most difficult to survive. You'll need a fire or some warm clothing to avoid the harsh cold. Food and water are more difficult to obtain as lakes and ponds are frozen over. But you're not the only thing that's desperate for food, so are the mutants and cannibals. This means you'll likely have to fight for your life and try not to become the mutant's next meal, so bundle up and stock up on your weapons. This will definitely put a test to your survival capabilities, so don't get too comfortable. Why the developers decided to add this feature is a complete mystery to me, but hey, who doesn't want to live in a world where everyone's head is abnormally large? Big head mode allows the player to play just like normal, except everything's head is much, much bigger. Kelvin's head, the cannibals, even the deer. Again, I don't know why this is a thing, but it's pretty funny and I couldn't go without adding it to this list. Bugs and glitches in video games can often be game breaking and can completely ruin a player's gaming experience. Other times, you may encounter a bug that you never want to see get patched. Sons of the Forest has several of these bugs that I know deep down will be fixed in the near future, but I never want to see them go. For example, my personal favorite, the bouncing logs. It's glitches like these that I really enjoy and I like to make the most of them before they're patched and I never get to experience them again. The developers of Sons of the Forest are really good at communicating when it comes to updates and announcements. They're active on both Reddit and Twitter, and they even show you how much time is left until the next update directly in the main menu of the game. It's always awesome to see video game devs that are open and communicative with the players. That about wraps up this video. Let me know what you love or hate about Sons of the Forest in the comments below. Thank you for your time, and if you have a moment, hit that subscribe button.